And now, ASAP Science presents the elements of the periodic table. There's hydrogen and helium, the lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon everywhere. Nitrogen all through the air, and oxygen so you can breathe in for it. You're pretty tea, neon to light up the sign, sodium for salty times. Magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, then sulfur, chlorine, then argon, potassium, then calcium so you'll grow strong. Scandium, titanium, vanadium, and chromium, and manganese. Well, welcome back. As you can see, we'll be looking at the gas stoichiometry worksheet. This is presented by, yep, you know me. I'm trying the Star Wars thing, you know, where they pull the little piece of paper and see how that works for you. So here we are. I hope you all have it out now. It's called Gas Stoichiometry. It says Chemistry 1B, Yuba College. On the top. And um, this particular problem is kind of a problem. But we'll get through it. So I look at it and it says um, a 0.391 gram sample of a metal reacts with excess hydrochloric acid to produce... 0.032 grams of a dry hydrogen gas in a non standard condition. What is the equivalent weight of the metal? Identify the metal. Oh my goodness, so where do we start? Well, like with any good stoichiometry problem, you got to start with a balanced equation. <clears throat> so looking at this, start with number one. Uh, I'm going to take a metal because <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm going to add a lot of hydrochloric acid to it. Because they say excess. And hydrochloric acid is relatively inexpensive. And I'm going to get a metal chloride. Again, I'm not really sure what that metal is. Because that's what I'm supposed to find. Plus hydrogen. Now, I have a few little hints here. How to help me out a little bit. First of all, I know it has to be balanced. Secondly, like if I know it's a metal, I have choices between my group 1 and my group 2. Well, thinking that I don't think they're going to make it totally difficult for us, I'm going to assume that this is going to be some metal, we'll call it X, and it'll be a Cl2. And this will be your X. <clears throat> and so therefore we have to have a 2 HL, HCl there. And then we have a balanced equation. Now is this perfect? Is this right? I don't know. Let's find out. The only thing I, can, I know is that when I have grams... If I have, um, they say I have 0 0.391 grams of this metal, and I have the dry hydrogen, which is nice because that means I don't have to correct it or anything, grams of this. The only thing I know is how to compare the moles, not the grams of a substance. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change my hydrogen into moles. So um, I have mass to moles, 3.22 grams hydrogen. Mm. This is a short one, so I'm not going to use my straight edge this time. I probably should have. Let me make that two a little bit better. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I have here that, um, looking at the periodic table, hydrogen gas is 2.01588 grams in one mole. So I math it. I get 0 0.01597 moles of hydrogen. Now, how is that going to help me? Well, I can look at this balanced equation and know that it's a one-to-one. -one, so I'm going to get 0 0.01597 moles of that metal. Right? One-to-one. -one. <clears throat> but how does that help me? So I need to think a little bit more about this. And I have to remember that some of my basic chemistry... Um, therefore, I have 0 0.01597 moles of metal reactant. 
let me think, what do I know? Well, I know if I take the grams divided by the molar mass, I will get moles. So let's look at that concept for a little bit. If I know the grams, and I do know the grams, it's 0 0.391, I do not know the molar mass, so we'll use that as x, and I do know the number of moles, 0 0.01597, I can obtain the molar mass. If I can obtain the molar mass, maybe I can look at my periodic table and I can determine what element it is. So this is one of those cases where I think there might be a little problem with the mathing. So let's do the process of mathing. That's not supposed to be there. If there's a dot on that, it's not supposed to be there. When I look at this, I look at it like this, because then I could cross multiply it. So I have 0 0.391 is equal to 0 0.01597 times my x. And it's times 1, so you can see why I did that. Might help if I move my paper up for you. Should I do that again? All right, so what I did here is this. I understood this, so I plugged in my numbers, and then I drew my line here to get this 1, so I can cross multiply it, 0 0.391 times 1, and then 0 0.01597 times x. I then I'm going to continue mathing it. I'm going to get 0 0.391 divided by 0 0.01597. Plug that into my calculator and I end up with x equaling 24.5. So I take out my handy dandy periodic table, one that has um, molar mass on it. <clears throat> and I'm going to locate it. Um, so I knew to probably start over at this end. I know this doesn't look the one that we have, but this is one I have here. And um, magnesium is 24.3050, and aluminum is already up to 26.98. So I can, with, with confidence, I can say that the element is more than likely magnesium. Not all the problems on this sheet are like this. Um, some are using Boyle's Law, some are using the Combined Gas Law, some are using the um, Ideal Gas Law. This is the one that would, um, there's another one similar to this on here, and this is the one I thought would cause the most consternation. So I wanted to model how to do that one and how I would go about um, using prior knowledge to solve this problem. Um, if you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to email me or contact me somehow and um, I'll try to answer your questions or if you get in a Google Doc or maybe we can do um, a Google Meet or something like that. So hope you're having a great day. We'll talk to you soon.